Hey everyone, it's good to have you guys back. In this video, I wanted to show you how our new features can be integrated into creating characters that are ready for posing or animation. You'll see an animation ready character created from concept art all the way through to the rendering phase. I'll briefly talk about manual retopology and what you need to consider when creating the new mesh. And I'll also show you how subdivision levels and detail transfer can be utilized in this process. First off, I started by creating some concept art to have a foundation to work from. I had the idea to recreate my friend and her dog, but to enlarge the dog. I painted the concept in Photoshop, basing it on physical drawings. Um, the dog is a pug, so I searched for some reference images to help with the anatomy. I put everything into ShapeLab and started sculpting. There was a bit of back and forth between raw sculpting and being considerate of the geometry and how it would be optimized. In the beginning, I focused only on blocking out the shapes that would define my scene, which helped me think about the composition later on. During this, I tried some brush settings out. I used the standard brush mostly, with the falloff turned way down and the strength turned up. This way I could get the loops of the dog skin. I added volume to those loops with the inflate tool, and that also helped me deepen the creases. The eyes I always mirror to the other side, I feel it's best to mirror and merge here to keep the symmetry. If they don't intersect in the middle, you can still separate them later. For the body I used templates at first, but then I decided to create the whole thing from scratch. I already did the headpiece earlier, so I just merged that to the body and tried to match the detail level. Then I went on to rearrange the high poly version in a posable stance, which could either be an A pose or a T pose. For the dog it's obviously going to be standing on all four feet. Generally you would use a T pose for more exaggerated motion, but the A-pose works just fine for more toned down movement. Sometimes artists like to model the body and the clothes as a single object if they know that the clothes won't change. However, in games where characters can change gear, or where realistic clothing movement is expected, it's a good idea to keep everything separate. In this case, I chose to keep the clothing separate so that I could work on the clothing pieces independently if I ever wanted to revisit the project to create textures or maybe reuse the clothing elsewhere. Keep in mind that in bigger productions, it's rare for artists to work across multiple fields because each step of the workflow requires deep technical knowledge. If one part of the creation process ends up flawed, it could jeopardize the whole project, resulting in lost time and money. Smaller indie projects or solo projects usually keep things simpler. This video is more of a demonstration, as animation is not my strongest suit. After finishing the high poly t -pose sculpt, I loaded the model into Blender. Trying to rig the high poly sculpt and pose it already feels like a nightmare. A single stroke of weight paint takes forever to calculate, even though this model is around 2 million polygons in total. Typically, a single, realistic and finely detailed character of ours would be in the range of 10 to 20 million polygons without any retopology. 
this is where optimization becomes necessary. I had to retopologize the entire model following the general rules of manual retopology. The goal of manual retopology is to lay down a quad mesh that is even and has a nice flow throughout the whole mesh. The F2 add-on helps a lot and if you add a shrink wrap modifier, the only thing you'll ever have to worry about is the right placement of the stars and the nice even density when laying down your mesh. This is essential if you want to create game-ready assets. This isn't going to be a deep dive into manual retopology, as I think there's a lot of great in-depth guides online that cover everything you need to know. Although manual retopology can be super intimidating, I highly encourage everyone to check out some videos on the topic. Once you get over being overwhelmed by not knowing if you ever do it right, it's actually pretty self-explanatory. You have to depend more on what feels right rather than being afraid of it is right. Okay, let's say I'm done with retopology. You might be wondering what happens to all the details I've sculpted before. Well, with subdivision levels finally here, Using detail transfer allows us to project the geometry of the detailed mesh onto the retopologized model. For this, I'll have to hop back into ShapeLab. I select the model with nice geometry, give it some subdivision levels, and I project the details to that level. Now I can export the retopologized model and create texture maps of the high resolution details. You can shorten the process if you already have a pipeline set with all the steps, but that requires you to be very considerate from the beginning. I personally think there is no shame in taking time and going back and forth between the apps. Sometimes it even helps to create something unique to only focus on conceptual and compositional stuff and take care of the optimization later on. When I put this all together in Blender, it's already going to link the texture maps to the right places in the shader nodes. From there on, it's up to you to mix in some custom procedural shaders or existing ones. Now I use Blender's Matterix to rig the characters namely the human and the wolf one. If somewhere it doesn't behave as expected, I'll adjust the waves by repainting it. This is going to be a lot easier with less resolution. I'll hide the body mesh wherever it should be covered up by the clothes. There's two type of bone relations, IK and FK bone relations. FK or forward kinematic bone relation refers to the hierarchy being from top to down, basically meaning you have to rotate or move each bone separately. Inverse kinematics, on the other hand, is going to pull all the bones when you move the last one. The first one is great for posing and the second one is super useful in animation. But you can even combine the two. I wanted to create nice poses for static renders too, so I used FK. I posed the scene and made some renders. So anyways, this is for today's video. I hope you had fun watching it and maybe got some tips. If you give any of it a go, please share your results on our Discord channel and see you guys next time.